Before you even depart for an MF Aerodrome, prepare for your arrival by reviewing all the information you can find on your intended destination. Your current CFS will have published up-to-date specifics regarding the mandatory frequency in use, its hours of operation, how far out, and how high above the aerodrome elevation that the MF area extends. It will also provide circuit pattern orientation, which is very important when planning circuit joining procedures in advance of your arrival. You can also find important information regarding special operations and cautions at the aerodrome. Once you've acquired this information, you're ready to take off and enjoy your flight, knowing that you're already armed with a mental picture of what to expect when you arrive at your destination. If at all possible, make your initial contact at least five minutes before entering the outer limits of the MF area, usually but not always five nautical miles. Just keep in mind that the person you're talking to may very well be located elsewhere than on the field itself, which is why they're referred to as an RCO, Remote Communications Outlet. Any comments or suggestions they make to you will be strictly based on reports they have from other aircraft operating in the area. So, if some aircraft is not following the correct procedure, the MF operator will have no way of informing you. It's up to you to keep a determined watch for unannounced aircraft and expect the unexpected. Remember, you're not under positive control and any final decisions are the sole responsibility of the pilot in command. In this video, we'll be landing at Muskoka Airport in Ontario, whose RCO is located in Timmins, Ontario. Muskoka Airport uses an Automated Weather Observation System, or AWOS. So before entering the Muskoka zone, you would tune into the AWOS frequency indicated in the CFS and get the information for the Muskoka area. Your initial transmission to any air traffic facility must contain the type of aircraft plus the last four letters of your registration. If you're transmitting to an RCO, include the airport that you're destined to and your intentions. Remember that an RCO is a facility remotely established from an FSS or FIC flight information center and their goal is to provide communication between the aircraft and the FSS or FIC. There's only one correct procedure to be used when establishing communications with an RCO. On initial contact, you should state the ATS unit, Flight Service Center or Flight Information Center controlling the RCO. The aircraft identification and the name of the location of the RCO followed by the individual letters RCO in a non-phonetic form. Timmins Radio, this is Cessna 172, Golf Lima November Yankee, uh, en route to Muskoka on Timmins RCO. Subsequent communications may be abbreviated to the last three letters if this shortened version is initiated by the ground facility. If not, you must continue to use all four letters. Lima November Yankee, uh, five miles south of Muskoka at 4,500 feet uh, with the numbers. Planning to enter the left-hand downwind for landing runway 18 Muskoka. Remember to keep your transmissions brief by using as much shorthand as possible. The MF operator will then either confirm your intentions or suggest alternative circuit entry options depending on any other aircraft they may be talking to. You might be asked to consider one of several different options available to your circuit entry at an MF aerodrome, including a straight in on the downwind leg, a 45 degree entry to downwind, overhead the field at a thousand feet above ground level, joining mid-downwind, straight in on the base leg, or if the situation allows, straight in on final. Uh, Lima November Yankee, uh, we'll call traffic in sight and uh, we'll confirm when able to fall the serious traffic for landing runway 18 Muskoka. Assuming your intentions are accepted, as you enter the MF area, continue listening in on the MF frequency. Then, as you join the aerodrome circuit, transmit your position. Timmins Radio, Lima November Yankee is established uh, on the downwind, left hand with the traffic in sight, and I'll be number two behind the Cirrus runway 18 Muskoka. Be particularly vigilant at this point in your flight. Watch carefully for unannounced aircraft entering downwind when climbing up from the crosswind joining overhead the field, or coming in from the right at a 45 degree angle. While on downwind, doing your pre-landing check, be sure to look at the windsock and make certain that you're satisfied with the runway you've been advised to use. And if you believe another runway would make a better choice, don't be afraid to call in and say so. Remember, you are not under positive control. You are being given advice, not directions. The final decision is up to you. 
Turning base is another opportunity to have a really good look around. This will be your last chance for an overall view of the airport at altitude and a great place to make sure no one is approaching on a long final. When the time comes for you to turn final, be sure to remember that old aviator's axiom, aviate, navigate, communicate. To turn onto final is a crucial one, so check one last time for unexpected aircraft on a long final. Once you're established on final, it's time for your next MF report. Timmins Radio, Lima November Yankee is turning final, 1-8 behind the Cirrus traffic. Lima November Yankee, Timmins Radio, Roger, report off the runway. Lima November Yankee, we'll call you down and clear of runway 1-8 Muskoka. From this point on, concentrate on your landing, but don't forget to scan around, above and below you for traffic which is not following proper procedure. Expect the unexpected. Be prepared that the preceding aircraft could land long and delay clearing the runway. An aircraft or ground vehicle could enter the runway environment without a clearance, or, as mentioned in the CFS, wildlife could unexpectedly enter the runway. After touchdown, you have one final transmission to make once you've cleared the active landing area. Timmins Radio, Lima November Yankee is down and clear of runway 18 on Bravo, Muskoka. Lima November Yankee, Timmins Radio, Roger. Monitor your radio on the MF while taxiing to your destination, advising any potentially conflicting aircraft of your position and intentions. While you don't have to call in before you're prepared to take off, it's good practice to monitor the mandatory frequency while taxiing out to the runway. As with your after landing maneuvering, again, feel free to advise other aircraft in motion of your position and intentions. With your engine run up and pre-takeoff checks completed, your passenger seatbelt securely in place, and a careful check for any other aircraft on final, it's time to broadcast your departure plans before entering the runway remember to use the last four letters of your registration for the initial contact. Timmins Radio, Golf Lima November Yankee, Cessna 172 is holding short on Alpha for departure 18 Muskoka with the numbers. After which the RCO will acknowledge your transmission with a response. Lima November Yankee, we're on your runway 18, take position near discretion, one destination. Lima November Yankee will be departing Muskoka to the southwest 4500 feet to Collingwood. Lima November Yankee, Roger, uh, report rolling and clear. Lima November Yankee, Roger, we'll report on the takeoff roll and clearing the zone to the southwest Muskoka. Timmins Radio, Lima November Yankee is rolling runway 18 Muskoka with a right hand turn out to the southwest. We'll report clearing the zone. Roger, thank you. After safely completing your takeoff, use your climb out to check for any potentially conflicting traffic. This is an excellent time to make these observations as any other aircraft will stand out more clearly because they'll be flying above you. Climb straight ahead to circuit height before making any turns, usually 1,000 feet above the aerodrome elevation, and then make your final MF report as you depart the MF area. Timmins Radio, Lima November Yankee is clearing the zone to the southwest at 4500. Lima November Yankee, thank you. Switching to 126.7. Before we end this review of mandatory frequency procedures, a few final points to bear in mind. If you're performing continuous circuits at an MF airport, report when joining the downwind leg. Report when established on final, being sure to include your landing intentions, whether they be full stop, touch and go, or go around. And after your final landing, report when you're clear of the landing area. If you're flying through an MF area, call in at least five minutes before entering the MF area, stating your aircraft's identification, your position and altitude, along with your intentions. Be sure to transit the area at least 2,000 feet above the airdrome elevation and report once you're clear of the MF area. If at all possible, it's a good idea to avoid overflying MF areas altogether in order to avoid possible conflict with other aircraft and to minimize radio congestion on the mandatory frequency. One final note, bear in mind that Nordo or no radio or receiver only aircraft are allowed to operate in MF areas by prior arrangement with the MF operator. Your only warning of this may be a transmission advising you, which means you may be advised of their potential presence, but not where they are. So keep your head on a swivel and expect the unexpected. 
because the final responsibility for locating aircraft in an MF area lies strictly with you.